Hello students, welcome to this program titled Theories of Teaching. The objectives set for the present session are to know the concept of teaching, to understand the concept of teaching theories, to know about formal theories of teaching, descriptive theories of teaching and normative theories of teaching. First we will start with what is theory. The term theory has been defined by eminent scholars in different ways like Kerlinger in 1964. A theory is a set of interrelated concepts, definitions and prepositions that presents a systematic wave of phenomena by specifying relationships among variables with the purpose of explaining and predicting the phenomena. A theory related to a subject refers to a well-organized theoretical framework for the understanding of a particular phenomenon or process. It helps in understanding the mechanism and interrelationships among the variables involved in that phenomenon or process. Theories have predictive value. The results of the particular phenomenon or process can be known in advance with the help of the theoretical framework supplied by a theory. We can predict the future success or failure to a great extent. Now what is teaching? Teaching is a quite serious task or activity undertaken by the teachers to produce desirable change in the behavior of the students. It's a process that's aimed at helping the students in their learning activities. And during this process, teachers are supposed to maintain a particular type of behavior called teacher behavior and engage in the activities called teaching activities. Now meaning and nature of theory of teaching. A theory of teaching must provide a theoretical framework for the proper planning, organization and control of the teaching tasks or teacher behaviors and manipulation of all the involved variables in order to realize the stipulated educational and instructional objectives as effectively as possible. It must help the teacher to make their students learn, that's to bring desirable change in their behavior and actualize their potentialities to the maximum. In a nutshell, a theory of teaching must provide the answers to all questions and queries related to teaching for efficient and effective learning. The views expressed by some educationists regarding the term theory of teaching to understand how they define and describe the term. Brunner in 1966 termed theories of teaching as nothing but explanation of general methodology of teaching and therefore these ought to be derived from the general theories of learning. A method of teaching points out the way or the activities undertaken and behaviors performed by a teacher for accomplishing his teaching objectives well. Judging in this way, a theory of teaching can be described as the application of knowledge of theories of psychology for improving classroom teaching, practice and the teaching skills of a teacher with all what has been understood as the meaning and definition of theories of teaching. We can summarize the nature in the following ways. First, theory of teaching is directly linked to the psychology of instruction. However, it may draw its material from various theories of learning and motivation, etc. In real sense, theories of teaching are evolved out of the logical insight into the learning process and logical analysis of the tasks. Theory of teaching explains and describes the behavior of the teacher typically in the classroom in order to help the students in better learning. In contrast to learning theories, which are psychological in nature, a teaching theory is predominantly social in nature. A theory of teaching answers three basic questions. First, how do teachers behave? Why do they behave so? And with what effects? A theory of teaching points out the proper way of effective knowledge, skill or attitude of the students. Theory of teaching helps in the implementation of contractual relationship between the teacher and the taught. 
theory of teaching can be safely used to manage teaching in terms of its planning, control and predication. A theory of teaching describes, justifies, explains and suggests the most appropriate way of manipulating the elements of variables involved in the teaching process. Now we will discuss need and significance of theory of teaching. In the process of teaching, our aim is quite clear. We as teachers want to help the students in their development and learning task. For the realization of this aim, we have to equip ourselves as adequately as possible. Our responsibilities in the shape of the teaching activities are quite practical in nature for which we need a lot of theoretical support. For building a bridge, the men who are busy in its construction need theoretical guidance, pre-planning and a lot of preparation before actually operating on it. Similarly, a teacher has to understand his nature of job, teaching tasks and many other responsibilities that he has to carry out in an attempt to build his students' future and develop their potentialities. The need of a theory of teaching may be felt on account of purposes served by it. It helps in understanding the nature and process of teaching by describing what is teaching, analysis of teaching, relationship between teaching and learning, conditions and factors affecting teaching, learning, etc. It helps in the proper formulation of teaching objectives, defining these objectives in behavioral terms and explaining how these objectives in general and particular can be effectively achieved by suggesting appropriate teaching techniques and strategies. It helps in understanding the role of different variables involved in the teaching process, their interrelationship and manipulation in order to achieve maximum learning. It helps in developing proper teaching models, teaching and instructional designs and teaching systems for a particular teaching learning situation. It helps in planning the essential ingredients and basic material for the organization of the courses and activities of the in-service and pre-service teacher training. It helps in the scientific and systematic study of the problems faced by the teachers in their day-to-day -day teaching activities as well as concerning further improvement of the teaching and instructional technology. It helps in its own way to transmit the fruits of extensive research carried in the area of teaching and teaching technology to the subject teachers and educational administrators. Now we will discuss types of teaching theories. A theory of teaching as described provides a theoretical framework to the teacher for carrying out his teaching activities as effectively as possible. The range of these teaching activities is varied and teaching learning situations for the performance of these activities are also quite heterogeneous. There are a number of subjects diversified subject material and learning experiences that ought to be provided by the teachers to the learners in varying capacities and age groups. Therefore, it's quite important that there cannot be a single theory applicable to all types of learners, learning experiences and teaching learning situations. Consequently, a number of teaching theories developed by educationists and psychologists are available for enabling the teachers to select and plan their own way of teaching according to the needs of the situation. These theories can be properly discussed by broadly classifying them into the following three groups. The first is formal theories of teaching, second descriptive theories of teaching and the third is normative theories of teaching. First we will discuss formal theories of teaching. These theories are based on certain principles of thought, science of knowledge and philosophical assumptions and that's why these are also termed as philosophical theories of teaching. The following four theories are included in this category. The first is meiotic theory of teaching. It is the earliest philosophical theory 
organized from the ideas and methodology of teaching put forth by the ancient Greek philosophers like Socrates and Plato. It also reflects the essentials of the educational philosophies of great Indian educationists such as Vivekanand and Gandhi. The essence of these philosophies lies in the assumption that all knowledge rests within the individual child and the task of teaching is to unfold the knowledge. As a teacher, one has to draw out the best in child's mind, body and separate. He does not have to put or include anything from outside. The knowledge is already there in the child's mind. The teacher's job is to draw out the inherent potentialities like a seed to grow into a useful plant. All what has to be done by the process of teaching is to provide adequate opportunities for the proper germination and growth of these potentialities. The second is communication theory of teaching. Quite contrary to the meiotic theory, this theory believes that a child has nothing with him like forgotten knowledge or inherent capacities which needs to be reproduced or unfolded through teaching. That's why what is given to him in terms of knowledge, skills, attitudes or interests is always affected from outside. It's not the child but the teachers who are pre-equipped with knowledge and skills at the time of teaching. It's their duty to communicate the same to the child by adopting proper methods for his welfare and development. The teacher may use a variety of methods and devices like narration, explanation, demonstration and experimentation for making his communication as effective as possible. In this way, quite appropriate to its name, this theory considers teaching as a way of effective communication. A teacher who is able to communicate well to his students for bringing the desired change in their behavior is said to be an excellent teacher. On philosophical lines, this theory is considered to be conceived through the Herbatian assumption of appreciating mass, that is assimilation of new experiences to a mass already existing in the mind. Consequently, communication theory advocates that while communicating with their students, teachers must make the use of their past experiences. As methodology, they should make the use of explanation, narration and demonstration activities. They should try to make maximum use of their students' sensory and perceptual abilities. In planning their lessons, it's advisable to follow the five famous Herbertian steps, namely preparation, presentation, assimilation, organization and recitation. Molding theory of teaching. This theory considers teaching as a process of behavior modification or a way of shaping and molding the student's behavior and personality in a desired pattern. It is the outcome of the ideas propagated by the school of behaviorism and involves the principle of stimulus response theories including operant conditioning. As a result, the teaching advocated by this theory Environmental influences hold the key and there the whole attention is paid towards the setting the proper environment for the teaching and arranging the most appropriate learning experiences leading to the satisfactory and rewarding results. Due care is also taken to provide immediate reinforcement for the shaping and sound conduct, attitudes and beliefs along with the assimilation of right knowledge and useful skills. The Mutual Inquiry Theory This theory believes that a child is very curious by nature and he is in habit of acquiring knowledge by putting questions or making inquiry about many things and happenings. Therefore, teacher's main duty lies in arranging the learning situation in such a way that helps the child to discover the knowledge by himself through inquiry. However, in doing so, he has to inquire or investigate about the nature 
interest and basic potential of the child, the nature of the subject matter of learning experiences to be acquired through inquiry, the nature of the environmental settings that can be helpful in making use of such inquiry and problem solving approach. Now we will discuss descriptive theories of teaching. The theories of teaching that try to describe the variables involved in the process of teaching in terms of their interrelationship and predict effectiveness are called descriptive theories of teaching. Their description is based on the empirical evidences and objective observation. On account of their predictive and prescriptive nature, these theories are also termed as prescriptive theories of teaching. They prescribe and point out the proper ways of organizing instructional process to achieve the desired instructional objectives and consequently these are responsible for giving birth to a number of theories of instructions like Gagne's hierarchical theory of instruction, Atkinson's optimum learning theory of instruction, Brunner's cognitive theory of instruction. Robert Gagne in 1970 provided a theory of instruction based upon his ideas about the types and conditions of learning. According to Gagne, one could find eight kinds of intellectual processing. In other words, there are eight kinds of chains in the human nervous system. Each one is important in its own way. The hierarchical ordering proceeds from simple to complex. Signal learning, stimulus learning, chaining, verbal association, multiple discrimination, concept learning, rule learning and problem solving. While discussing these phases of learning in the process of learning, Gagne pointed out the different instructional events in hierarchical order that do take place in the process of instruction. Accordingly, Gagne's theory of instruction planned the instructional strategy adopted by the teacher through the steps like the following. First, get the students motivated to learn. It can be done by creating students' interest in the learning task to inform the learner about the learning outcomes or objectives attained may prove to be a good motivating force. Make students attend to presented learning material to assimilate new learning material by stimulating recall to the previous related learning. Provide sufficient learning guidance for learning and memorizing the presented learning. Help learners for the retention of newly acquired learning experiences. Help students to transfer or generalize the facts, principles or concepts to new situation. Help students demonstrate their achievement or performance and to provide them with immediate feedback. Atkinson's Optimal Learning Theory of Instruction Richard C. Atkinson, 1968, while working with the computer for the computer-assisted instructions for dealing effectively with the problem of individual differences in learning, came with a theory of instruction leading the students to the optimal learning. An instructional strategy, according to his theory, deals with the teacher first must lay out instructional objectives specified in behavioral terms. The teacher should then chalk out a model of teaching learning process by specifying the necessary instructional activities. A proper strategy should be talked out by measuring the attainment of each instructional objective by designing suitable measurement scales. Brunner's Cognitive Theory of Instruction J.S. Brunner proposed a theory of instruction which is very different from the earlier psychologists. This theory was based on his ideas and assumptions summarized as learning is not simple a stimulus response, conditioning or RS reinforcement but rather a cognitive process. As a cognitive process, it involves three simultaneous acts. First, acquisition of new knowledge or information. Second, transformation of knowledge that one already possesses. Third, checking 
the pertinence and the adequacy of knowledge one has. Curiosity is the basic instinct possessed by every individual. Right from the period of infancy, knowledge is gained on account of curiosity about the things, objects and events surrounding us and our attempts to involve ourselves in the knowledge getting process. Conceptualization or categorization is the first major step in the process of learning. We as human beings have a tremendous capacity to discriminate objects or events in the environment, categorize or classify them in a particular or generalized way. However, the child should be helped in the formation of right concepts from the very beginning. J.S. Berner advocated the use of concept attainment model devised by him for this purpose. The development of cognitive abilities in human beings is like a continuous process. It takes place quite systematically by involving the three developmental stages that are as the inactive mode or stage, the iconic mode or stage, the symbolic representation mode or stage. Children should not be made to repeat, reproduce and present the ideas, concepts and principles but should be encouraged to learn in their own and discover the things by themselves. For this purpose, they should be given proper opportunities for their own active involvement in the knowledge getting process. Emphasizing this, Brunner in 1966 writes that we teach a subject not to produce little living libraries on that subject but rather to get a student to think for himself to consider matters as a historian does to take part into the process of knowledge getting knowledge is a process not a product for giving such ideas a practical shape Brunner advocated the use of discovery learning in his cognitive theory of instruction by this approach, he wanted the students to learn through their own active involvement in the process of learning, to develop their independent problem-solving skills, to analyze and manipulate information rather than to simply absorb it and to engage in the task of discovering or rediscovering and understanding the things by themselves. According to Brunner, teachers should keep in mind such a theory of instruction which helps them to achieve both the goals of knowledge and knowledge getting process simultaneously. For this purpose, he advised them to cover the four aspects in their process of instruction. Predisposition to learn, structuring the knowledge, sequencing of the present material, providing due reinforcement. Now we'll discuss normative theories of teaching. Like animal learning, human learning cannot take place under rigidly controlled conditions. We usually have normal conditions and set up for our teaching learning activities. Therefore, there is a great need of theories which can explain, guide and control the variables involved in the process of teaching under the normal classroom conditions. Normative theories serve such purpose. These theories properly throw light on the relationship among the teaching variables on the basis of observations carried out in normal teaching conditions. They set out the norms for teaching learning conditions best suited for achieving the desired teaching learning objectives. The findings of these theories are applicable for more generalized sets of situation or conditions available in a normal classroom setup. Theories that are classified as normative theories are Gag's Cognitive Theory of Teaching, Rayan's Theory of Teacher Behavior, Mitra's Psychological Theory of Teaching. Anil Gag's Theory of Teaching is influenced by the ideas propagated by the School of Cognitive Psychology. Cognitive psychology does not allow the teacher to resort to simple stimulus responses, mechanism or habit formation, but asks them to make the use of principles of cognitive learning, such as meaningful organization of the perceptual field, information processing, independent problem solving, etc. 
for utilizing the cognitive abilities of the learners to the maximum. The view expressed in Cage's theory of teaching may be summarized as teaching task is mainly concerned with helping the students in proper comprehension or meaningful learning of the content material. They can have proper comprehension if this content material is organized, arranged and presented in a proper way by following the principles of cognitive learning. The programmed learning material can be cited as an example of such well-structured and organized material. Teaching tasks consists of many activities that need to be planned and organized according to the available situations and circumstances. The type of role to be played by the teacher as such is philosopher, motivator, counselor, demonstrator and supervisor etc. The type of educational objectives to be achieved, the type of learning in which the learner is to be engaged, just in motor learning, concept learning, problem solving, etc. The type of the stage or components of learning such as preparing students to learn, sustaining their attention and interest, helping in proper comprehension, reinforcing their learning or evaluating their learning outcomes. Rayan's theory of teacher behavior. D.G. Rayan put forward a theory of learning based on the concept of teacher behavior. According to it, teaching is greatly influenced by the verbal and non-verbal behavior of the teacher, demonstrated by him in the classroom in order to induce learning. Therefore, the improvement in teaching and classroom instruction is dependent on the quality of the teacher behavior demonstrated by the teacher in the classroom activities. There is certain basic assumption attached with the teacher behavior as teacher behavior is a function of situational factors. Teacher behavior is a function of a situational factors present at the time of teaching and personal characteristics of the individual teacher. Teacher behavior is observable and thus can be measured in terms of desirable or undesirable behavior for the purpose of a good teaching. Based on these said assumptions, the theory of teacher behavior emphasizes the teaching learning conditions must be designed to help the teachers in maintaining proper teacher behavior. The teachers must pay due attention for picking up the desirable behavior and personal characteristics helpful in teaching and appropriate classroom interaction. Since teacher behavior is observable and can be measured to a reliable extent, good techniques of its observation and measurement like Flanders interaction analysis may be prioritized for providing pre-service and in-service training to the teacher. Teachers may also adopt these techniques for their self-evaluation resulting in the improvement of their verbal and non-verbal behavior. Mitra's Psychological Theory of Teaching This theory put forward by Sahib K. Mitra, a former director of NCRT, is an attempt to apply the psychological principles in the field of teaching. The main ideas propagated by this theory can be summarized as teaching needs to be restricted to the formalized instructional situations. However, it may take place in and outside the classroom and school. For teaching to take place, there must be at least two persons, one the teacher and the other the students. These two persons need to be bound by a contractual relationship. The teacher has a responsibility of influencing the behavior of the taught or pupil in order to lead him from his entry behavior to the set terminal behavior. Teacher should formulate his teaching task based upon his knowledge or the psychological principles related to the psychology of individual differences, learning, intelligence, personality, aptitude and achievement. The teaching task so formulated may include activities like first, analyzing teaching task, second, 
identifying entry behavior of the pupils. Third, defining teaching objectives. And fourth, selecting teaching strategies. This is all related to our today's topic, theories of teaching. Hope you have enjoyed and understood. Thank you for watching. <laughs>